The 100-pound Parrot Rifle, number 167, is located to the north of the west stairway to the capital. This muzzle-loading cannon was cast at West Point Foundry in New York. During the Civil War, number 167 was part of the armament of the 9th S. Steamer Nipsic. This bronze sundial was dedicated to Union veterans of the Civil War during their 1938 Grand Army of the Republic encampment in Des Moines. Nearly three million Union soldiers fought during the Civil War. In 1938, an estimated 5,000 were still living. More than 100 of these veterans, most over 90 years old, attended the encampment. Dr. D. W. Morehouse, then president and astronomy professor at Drake University, installed and adjusted the timepiece. The cornerstone is located on the southwest comer of the capital. The original cornerstone was laid in 1871, but when weaknesses were found in the first foundation, a new foundation was laid in 1873 and the cornerstone reinscribed, Iowa AD 1873. Some 40 items were contained in the cornerstone. A statewide penny drive among school children raised money to finance this monument. It is the only representation of Lincoln depicting him in his role as a father. Dedicated in 1961, this sculpture was initiated two years earlier to honor the 150th anniversary of Lincoln's birth. Fred Torrey, a renowned Lincoln sculptor, designed and created the statue. Mabel Torrey, his wife and a specialist in child sculpture worked on the statue of Tad. The artists used a photograph of the president and his son as a guide. The design for this grouping called, the Pioneer of the Former Territory, a group consisting of father and son guided by a friendly Indian in search of a home. The pioneer depicted was to be hardy, capable of overcoming the hardships of territorial days to make Iowa his home. A Connecticut artist, Carl Gearhart, was contracted to do the piece for $4,500. Originally designed to be a lion's head, this bronze buffalo head was determined more appropriate to Iowa's prairie environment. The fountain was made for drinking, for horses as well as humans, Alexander Doyle, designer of the Great Seal Tablet, designed this fountain as well, for $500. The most striking monument on the State House grounds is the granite shaft rising 145 feet, erected to the memory of the soldiers and sailors of the Civil War. The heroic bronze figure victory is predominant, while at the base there are four groups representing different branches of the military or naval service, and numerous historical plaques and medallion portraits of typical soldiers. Below the base of the granite shaft is Iowa, a mother offering nourishment to her child, and history gazes into the future with Iowa, shown as a young boy, at her side. The original design was by Harriet A. Ketchum. Work on the monument was commenced in 1894, but dedication occurred five decades later in 1945. In 1917, friends of Senator William B. E. Allison, citizens and school children of Iowa, and the state legislature raised this memorial. A pivotal figure in Iowa's Republican Party, Allison, 1829-1908, represented Iowa in Congress for 43 years. He was twice a candidate for the presidential nomination of his party, and was a close associate of every United States president from Abraham Lincoln to Theodore Roosevelt. The monument is an allegorical design of heroic dimensions, depicting civic duties in the public service, with the topmost figure republic and other figures of knowledge, peace, the legislature, financial prosperity, humanity, and agricultural prosperity. On Memorial Day 1984, Governor Terry E. Branstad and former Governor Robert D. Ray dedicated the Vietnam War Memorial. The memorial is dedicated to the 11,500 young Iowans who served during the Vietnam era, and has the names of 855 Iowans who lost their lives during the conflict inscribed on its face. 
The monument is constructed from Black Mirror Finnish Cold Springs granite, which is the same material used for the Vietnam Veterans Memorial in Washington, D.C. The drive for a Korean War monument began in 1984 when students from a Des Moines school wrote Governor Terry E. Branstad asking why Korean War veterans did not have a memorial. The monument includes a 14-foot-tall central obelisk and eight six-foot-tall tablets that tell the story of the Korean War utilizing words, pictures, and maps engraved in the granite. Erected on a grassy area south of the State House, the monument was dedicated by Governor Branstad on May 28, 1989. After typhoons in 1959 severely damaged crops, homes, and farmlands of the Yamanashi Prefecture in Japan, citizens of Iowa generously sent breeding hogs and feed com to aid that district. This program began a friendship culminating in a sister state relationship, the first of its kind between the United States and Japan. As a sign of their appreciation, the citizens of Yamanashi presented this monument to Iowa in 1962. The 2000 pound bell of peace and friendship and the structure that houses it was made in Japan. The United States Department of the Treasury presented this replica Liberty Bell to Iowa in 1950 to recognize the state for its efforts in the previous 10 years for war bond drives. Governor William Beardsley appropriately dedicated this symbol of independence on Independence Day. The bell, cast in Annecy Levier, France, weighs 2,000 pounds. In 1950, the Tall Corn, now Mid-Iowa, Council of the Boy Scouts of America donated this miniature Statue of Liberty to the state of Iowa as part of its annual service project. The idea of the Peace Officer Memorial was originally conceived by Raymond Baker, police chief of Cedar Rapids. Governor Terry E. Branstad dedicated this memorial in May 1985 to all Iowa peace officers who sacrificed their lives while protecting the rights of Iowa's citizens. Located near the Pape Building, the memorial's three outer forms symbolize three levels of law enforcement, city, county, and state. Pads connect these forms to the memorial's center pinnacle, which represents the officer's supreme sacrifice. The original design was created by Richard Webb, an Ames police officer. In the fall of 1994, a group of Iowa veterans of World War II was formed to raise funds for a monument on the Capitol grounds commemorating the heroic efforts and sacrifices of Iowans who contributed to the victory in World War II. On November 11, 1996, the monument was dedicated and given to the people of Iowa. The purpose of the Freedom Flame Monument is twofold, to honor all of those who served so valiantly during World War II, veterans and civilians alike and to provide posterity with knowledge about the compelling reason for the country's involvement in the war, the preservation of freedom around the world. Four major components are included in the monument, the Freedom Walk is a walkway with major events of the war engraved in granite and includes. The Pearl Harbor Memorial, the map of the world is a 72-foot diameter depiction of the world, with colored maps showing the major battles of the war mounted on concrete stands, the Freedom Flame, towering 35 feet into the sky, is a five-component, stainless steel stylized sculpture of a flame, with a beam of light visible from more than a mile away at night, and the wall. Of Memories is a 65-foot-long semicircular wall picturing the nine Iowa servicemen who were awarded their country's highest honor, the Congressional Medal of Honor. Surrounding panels show memorabilia of the time as reminders of the impact the war had. The sculpture commemorates those moments when Iowa has been at the forefront of breaking the silence of inequality and commemorates those Iowans who refused to stand by silently when they saw injustice. Placed around the sculpture is the story of Ralph, a slave from Missouri who found freedom in Iowa. In 1834, Ralph entered into an agreement with his Missouri owner to earn his freedom by working in the lead mines near Dubuque and paying his owner $550 plus interest. 
After five years, however, Ralph had not earned enough money to make the payments, and two bounty hunters from Virginia offered to capture and return him to Missouri for $100. When Ralph was seized, an Iowa farmer named Alexander Butterworth stepped in and went to a local judge. The judge suggested that the matter should be heard by the Supreme Court of Territory. Iowa's three High Court justices heard the case and ruled in favor of Ralph. In their ruling, the justices stated that Ralph should pay his debt but contended that no man in this territory can be reduced to slavery, thereby confirming Iowa's position as a free territory. This decision, reached on July 4, 1839, was the first case handed down by the Iowa Territory Supreme Court. The unanimous ruling established the tradition in Iowa's courts of ensuring the rights and liberties of all the people of the state. Years later, the legislature adopted Iowa's motto, Our liberties we prize and our rights we will maintain, which stands as a permanent reminder that the freedoms in this state are freedoms for all. Shattering silence is a dominant feature, standing nearly 28 feet at its tallest point, and reaching over 32 feet across. The sculpture features Dubuque limestone, 16 wedges of reflective steel, and an acrylic orb in the center. It is situated to the west of the Judicial Branch building. The sculpture was dedicated October 22, 2009. Iowa is the 38th state to create a monument to its workers. The initial originators of the idea of a workers' monument felt strongly that proper credit should be given to Iowa workers' strong work ethic, which contributes to making Iowa a great place to live and work. This 11 foot tall by 11 foot wide balanced square form consists of four interlocking arms and hands, a powerful universal image, dedicated to the energy and integrity of the workers of Iowa. Each arm supports the other, in the same way, a diverse blend of people, from many backgrounds, come together to work and create the cultural and business base of Iowa. Built of welded bronze strips and supported by a stainless steel interior armature, the sculpture combines twisting, woven, and fluid components with a bundled energy that recalls muscles and nerves and their potential for movement and feeling. The open, latticed quality of the construction allows sunlight to sparkle and dance through the sculptural space, shifting constantly between the internal and external realms. Bronze's reflective depth, warm earth tones, and its aging pattern have a textural richness and exceptional durability. Groundbreaking for the Iowa Holocaust Memorial was held on May 14, 2013, on the Capitol Grounds West Terrace. Construction continued through the summer and on October 23, 2013, over 200 people from across the state attended its dedication. The memorial was built in memory of Holocaust victims to express appreciation to Iowans who served in the U.S. Armed Forces and who liberated concentration camps, and in honor of over 100 Holocaust survivors who came to live in Iowa. The memorial consists of four walls of aluminium panels that contain stories, quotes, and 13 photographs. Twelve of the photographs are reproduced, courtesy of the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum's photographic archives, while the 13th is reproduced courtesy of the Iowa Jewish Historical Society.